Good morning, this is Alamon, and welcome back to Creatus Korea, episode 9. We have this uh, nice, sad song, The Sound of Summer, because our beloved King Sejong the Great passed away, leaving us with this uh, mediocre at best, uh, new guy, new dynasty, terrible legitimacy. Um, the air is okay, still subpar. At the close of last episode, we just gobbled up this uh, bunch of land from the Korchin, gave it to Jianzhou and Yuren. Um, it did just occur to me that, of course, if your vassals get too large, they um, might start getting angry with you. But, um, yeah, they still have the vassal attitude. We really can't have these guys grow much larger, though. We will have to start annexing pretty soon. Although, especially for the Yuren, it's a little misleading because so many of these are big provinces with virtually no base tax. Like there, one base tax. So they're really not that big in terms of um, base tax. We have much richer land down here. So, um... Uh, I did notice our explorer has finished, so let's pull up. Oh, actually, uh, there's somebody in that space. Alright, we'll just let that happen. I'd like to see who's there. Um, one of the important things to do as Korea is to cut off Russia from reaching the Pacific. And also to um, clog up the coastline so that you don't get any, uh, like, Castilian Kamchatka or anything gross like that. Uh, all this stuff down here I don't really care about because all of it, every single province, is tropical. I don't know if that actually applies all the way down in Australia, but um, only this province, this uh, Kelong, is non-tropical. Yeah. Uh, so we are recombining our armies after that war. Our colony is still growing. Um, oh, spoils of war. That's right. I was going to say, we definitely don't have a positive balance of plus 22.77. Oh, they're allied now. Well, isn't that a laugh and a half? That just might be the wedge that drives Korea and Ming apart. Because I don't want this little exclave. Well, it's their capital. I don't know if you can really call it an exclave. But uh, sitting in the middle of our territory. Oh, that was fast. Do they hate each other now? What's going on here? Uh, okay, so the Sibir. Alright. And then I guess we'll tell our explorer to come home. Wait, did I really just see that name? Heh. <laughs> uh, it's one letter away from being the great horse maybe Temal but uh, Ma'a is horse in Mandarin so it's kind of a mix I guess you could say between oh very nice buckets are always nice uh, kind of a mix between uh, some Korean and some Chinese you know we I don't think have had any uprisings at all oh and uh, somehow that's now negative growth that wasn't supposed to happen. You know what? Let's just crank this up again. Get this province finished off strong. Because they are so close. Just 170 left. Oh, Gideon has pretender rebels. Do I care about that? Uh, or rather the high seas with the... Um... Is that a important center of trade? No even though the trade node is named after it. Oh, that must be the objective button. Man, I am just learning as I go here. We do have two diplomats just sitting around doing nothing, but, um... Oh, the Oirat, I see they have annexed Mongolia. So let's improve relations again. Um... Yeah, they don't like us very much. But we can get quite comfortably into positive relations just by um wait where's our 
When will we arrive there? 23rd of May. Okay, we'll, we'll let him do that, but then... Oh, darn, I was just trying to not path through them, but, uh... Oh! No, 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 we don't want this. I mean, I guess if it's happening to my vassal, I don't care too much. I mean, as long as we're not going to war. You know, better than, than me, but, uh... Still not exactly desirable. Lose five aggressiveness. Wow. And we get plus 100 goods produced. Plus 100%, that is. I'd love to make 100 tea. Oh, that is... That's just perfect. Ah. <sighs> the random number generator giveth and it taketh away. But right now, it's giveth-ing. All right. Oh, good neighbor bonus. So we will take this now. And... Morale is always nice. Let's just go for the offensive. And let's uh, take a quick look through these. So Hamgyong, they're just going to be angry forever. I don't really know what to do there. I wish I knew um, how long autonomy decreased. Or actually, no, it's right there. So into oh wow, <laughs> that's forever. Oh gosh, it's another uh, what eighteen years. Oh, I'm suddenly feeling paranoid about uh, whether or not I started recording this episode. Hmm, maybe I will do a quick alt tab. I'm not sure what's going to show up in the recording. I think that Fraps will just stick with the uh, application that it started with. But uh, let's see. View movies. Uh, yeah, I think I'm recording. I'm not seeing the size increase, but I think it has a buffer that it does, and then it just writes periodically. So let's resume. Oh yeah, I guess that was slightly dangerous, um, having these guys still wandering around right after I upgraded the unit type. Oh, very nice. It's, uh, revealing terrain. Oh, I guess we can get up and around the, uh, severe, can't we? No, no, no. There we go. Um. I guess we did need some Diplo points, huh? Permanent Casas Belly against Pagans. That will, I think, work against the Ainu. Yep, they are Animist. Very good. It looks like the Jianzhou are actually doing a pretty good job of um, knocking out these little armies. Let's go back to our exploring army. We have broken to uh, zero relations. The Oirat. Oh, that's gonna take absolutely forever. Colony might be done next month. It did not take over. Although by this point, I think we actually should pull this down to um, to the zero because spending the extra money won't actually accomplish a single thing. Okay, maybe it would have. I apparently don't. 
Uh, okay, yeah. Oh yeah, why haven't I um, put my forces there? And then let's go over here. We can unlock all that fleets, attach them, bring them up as well to Hobgillen. Because um, there is no aggressiveness now. There can be no uprising. Oh, growth. What? I don't know why that happened. All right, whatever. You are self-sustaining. I think I forgot that I would be able to build armories by this point. Um, we do have a nice, uh, I think it's, um, I completely forget how to find this. Oh, here it is. That's right, build cost minus 20%. We could build three buildings right now. Um, we are often starved for manpower. Right, let's see how we are in this province now. Yeah, still 5.5%. Um, head to Allah, that would still be the um, Manchu Patriots, yeah. Let's check over here. 4.6 years. Of course, that's just a mean time to happen. Uh, we could harsh treatment again. Actually, it's cheaper now. It's only 27. I think it was like 55 before. Well, I'm just gonna let that keep ticking up. like all of the uh, rebellions there have finished. Getting close to our admin um, cap. Okay, we do have a neighbor bonus now. Very nice. Just for fun. That's actually not that terrible, September 1495. It's a long time. Um, yeah, let's start that process. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll see how that works. And it is making progress. Um, sorry, so that would normally increase by eight each month. Let's see how much we are siphoning off. So it would be 115. So only two per month. So that's much more sustainable than the uh, previous patch, but of course it goes much more slowly than the previous version of EU4. Alright, that was indeed the very last province that we could explore. Oh, and it's Muscovy already! Ah! Not very happy about that. Well, we're very close to being able to get a uh, Casas Belle against... Ugh, I don't want to lose either of these. Well, to be fair, we're gaining Diplo power at a much faster rate. Hmm. Oh, and our next uh, guy will have a lot of Diplo um, skill as well, our next king. So let's just do that. And in a way, because we have a natural, or a, sorry, a national focus on um, on Diplo, um, uh, taking a fifty-point hit to that is sort of like distributing it among all three, really. Which I suppose is good. So 
I don't know how bad this um, uprising is going to be. It hasn't ticked up any further since the warning appeared. So many things we have to do. Oh, that was a tough battle. Yeah, 5,000, huh? Wow. That is an unusual couple of provinces there. Hmm. the long march home now. So as soon as we hit 400 Diplo power, of course, now that we're annexing the Tianzhou, that will take longer, but um, once we hit that, we will get the um, permanent Casas Ballet against Pagans, which will apply to the Ainu, and then we can start leapfrogging up the coast. And uh, they are shamanists up there. The, um, Chaveni. Although I think that they would probably be out of coring range from Sakhalin, which is uh, where the Ainu are. 95%, okay, so there's probably going to be an uprising soon. Uh, we do have our king. So I don't know if because Hamgyong has the most unrest that that would be the focal point of the uprising, or whether it just distributes it. I hope we don't get anyone on Chechudo. Uh, let's mothball those again, by the way. Before they were getting um, pretender rebels, now they're getting lots of patriots. Well, I don't want them to lose their corn progress, but I also don't have armies able to take on that many quite yet. I guess um, a lot of that prestige probably came from exploring. I always forget that uh, exploring gives you prestige. That feels like an awful lot to have. Because uh, we need that coin progress. Hopefully they will win. It looks like they will. E yes, they did win. So now we will run back to Hamdong. always the right pick. Take the inflation with the um, monarch points. How is our inflation? Oh, not bad at all. Is that still our same guy from... Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah, we took him at the beginning of the game. 67 years old, that's really old for an advisor. I 
kind of want this uh, rebellion to just fire so we can get it over with. Although it now looks like um, unrest might be ticking down. Oh, probably just because of legitimacy. Yeah, that's got to be it. Yeah. Oh, they're back to defensive again. That's unfortunate. I think this will be kind of a quiet part of the game. Uh, we're starting to annex these vassals. We're also uh, trying to get our final idea here so that we can start attacking the Ainu without taking a zero uh, CB war. Then uh, start colonizing, climb up the coast, eventually get to Alaska and um, California. But we are at the mercy of, well, to be fair, the king uh, does have three diplomatic skills. That's not bad. It's not good, but not bad. Actually, that is within our grasp. But, um... No... I don't want to take that mission. Okay, Regency Council. That might re... Uh, re oh, it's a terrible council. 1-1-2. One, one, and we have eight years until our heir comes of age. Not a whole lot's going to be happening. Uh, no. We don't want to lose that much legitimacy. It's the price of having high prestige. Um, but at least we have much higher legitimacy now. Let's take a look at uh, this. So mean time to happen is 5.5 years. Well, you know what? That was a new year there. Let's stop here. Take a quick look at our little empire here. We have our ally, the Ming. And we, by this point, have pretty much all of Manchuria. Just this uh, one province here of um, Boduna is not under our sphere of influence. So we've done pretty well for ourselves. And uh, indeed almost all of it is cored, just this one province is not quite done being cored yet. And that's going to take a long time actually. Alright, so let's stop there. Good night sleep tight, and as always, do not let the gray skin bite. Bye-bye.